Hi everyone, this is Shantae. I'm here with, you know, the analysis today on Thursday, August 20th, 2020. Um, I'm late. I, my schedule has been off because the DNC was on this whole entire week. And I've been watching four nights straight. I normally watch the DNC a lot. I've been watching it since I was a little girl um, with my parents. So now that I live alone, I watched it. It was really good. I mean, I watched it always, but I watched it the first time that I live alone that I'm watching it. It was amazing. It was virtual. It was not normal. Like you normally see with the crowds and the delegates with the balloons and the hats and everything. Yeah, I'm going to talk about Joe Biden's speech next. I'm not going to be long, but I, I got to address the coronavirus. The coronavirus, the coronavirus, the coronavirus is important. And I have the numbers and they come from the John Hopkins website and the New York Times COVID map. So here we are. Globally, we had 22,539,975 cases of COVID around the world. Um, here at home, we are at 5,572,538 cases. Um, the death toll here is 174,000. Hey, cousin, 201. Brazil is at 3,456,652, followed by India. 2,836,925. Russia has 939,000. Um, South Africa has 599,940. Peru has 558,000. Mexico has 537,000. Colombia has 502,000. Chile has 391,000, almost close to 392. Um, Ecuador has 105,000. Um, DR has 89,000. Panama has 83,000, about 83,000. Guatemala has 65,983. Honduras has about 52,000. And El Salvador has 23,964. In the African nations, you have Nigeria at 50,164. Guyana, 43,260. Kenya, 31,000. Cameroon, about 18,000. Senegal at um, 12,000. And Gambia at... 2401. Um, Haiti um, has 70, 7,997. Bahamas, 1,531. Jamaica, 1,192. Guyana, 846. Um, Trinidad, 767. Um, Belize, 605. Uh, Barbados, 156. Antigua, 94, St. Vincent, 58, St. Lucia, 26, Grenada, still at 24, Dominica, still at 18, St. Kitts, still at 17. Um, just to keep in mind, some of these um, islands are on level three. That's according to the CDC, which is avoid traveling there, believe it or not, because some of these countries did open back up their country. Hey, T, some of these countries did open back their countries up. So that's that's what's going on. Um, that's level three. According to the CDC, uh, here at home, California has 652,835, followed by Florida, five, 50, 588,594, Texas, 587,267, New York is 432,523, um, Georgia is at 230,288, Illinois, 250,886, Arizona, 196,356, New Jersey, 190,356, North Carolina, 150,272, um, Louisiana, 140,962, and South Carolina is at 109. Um, Maryland is probably in the 100,000. We don't know. Oh, sorry, God. Well, Missouri is a new hotspot. Missouri is a new hotspot. And the governor is a Trump lackey. Let's get that straight. From Claire McCaskill's mouth, that's what she said. So, I'm not going to get into the counties because the counties, we already know Los Angeles is one of the top. Los Angeles might be neck and neck with New York because New York City has over 237 thousand cases and Los Angeles have about um, 25, 225,000. So, they're like right up there right and of course our unemployment numbers um the unemployment numbers do, 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 trying to find the paper with unemployment numbers um it's about 50 million americans unemployed so let's just get that clear over 30 million americans 
I have filed for unemployment. Uh, one point one million Americans filed for unemployment as of last week. So that's a um, one hundred and thirty five thousand increase. And in terms of, and that's from C um, MSNBC. But according to the CNBC thing, nineteen Americans that applied for the assistance under Donald Trump's executive order. Um, two of the states are want to do the full four hundred, while the other seventeen states has filed for, uh, has starting to pay the lower amount and Arizona started paying it as a Monday. So here's the thing. I don't know if this can go through because this money has to be allocated by Congress and the Senate is not back in session until September. And a lot of people are already facing evictions. There are a lot of people are homeless, losing their, about to lose their homes, got to fight in court. So I just got a phone call here in new york even though i'm not facing any evictions but you don't know what can happen because i've been paying my rent on time all day every day um they left a message and saying that you can apply for the assistance and and whatnot so i got a phone call from i from the city from the one of the city councils so that's what's going on right now like we're facing a crisis and with the speeches which i'm about to get into um, so the DNC speeches were good. Keisha Lance Bottoms, I, I quoted for her, we must, um, vote and we, we must register and we must vote. Um, that was one of it. It was really good. Cory Booker basically expressed the vision of the, the incoming party and how, um, the Biden and Harris administration will save America. Andrew Yang addressed, um, Pete Buttigieg addressed us. Tammy Duckworth, who gave a stark warning on, you know, military families because she is a, a vet and um, she could possibly be a potential cabinet member. I mean, most of these people that talked, especially that served, that, that ran against Biden can during the primaries. And speaking of Mr. Biden, he actually gave one of the best speeches of his political career. Joe Biden been serving in, 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 as a public servant for like almost 50 years. And he's almost 80 years old. He's been serving since he was a young buck. So the speech was really good. One of them I got was, thank you, Mr. President. You've been a good president. Like no one really has really said that. They thank him for the economy, but not actually being a good president. They say, forever my president. But I always say he was a good president. Yep, everybody read Trump for their filth. Everybody, every single soul, all this week, all the Democrats and even some Republican allies have read Trump for their filth. Read Trump up and down, up and down the road. And of course, Trump is watching because he has nothing better to do. So he's been watching and criticizing everybody. You're, you invited racists to the convention next week. The two, the couple that stuck the guns up at the protesters in, uh, what's it, St. Louis? You're inviting them motherfuckers next week. And your diversity will be what? Steve Cortez, Diamond and Silk, Candace Owens, the other, the, 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 the dumb Democrat who didn't put himself as a Republican, who was on, made himself an embarrassment, Vernon, Vernon Jones, the state, um, Senator from Georgia, who is a Democrat, which I don't understand why you still a goddamn Democrat. Just saying. But the speech was really good. I really enjoyed it. I, I enjoyed the young man, Braden Harrington, who had a stutter. He was he was he, he he was powerful because Joe Biden looked at him and knew like, yo, you have a a, a speech like you have a a stutter problem, like. People know when you have a disability and they just can look at you right away. My sister had a learning disability growing up. So she looked at a kid who had a learning disability. And yeah, this a smug little jerk that mocked that. Yeah. I mean, listen, we are some unprecedented times and we're trapped in our house. I'm trapped in my house. I have started this live stream instagram little podcast i don't have large viewership but i hope to have a lot large viewership you know god willing you know claim it in the name of jesus one day just to educate people on what the hell is going on 
And Pete Buttigieg did give a, a, a speech about LGBTQ. I would have thought Tammy Baldwin would have did the same thing because she's openly gay that serves in the damn Senate, U.S. Senate. So I don't understand that shit, how she didn't talk about her relationship with her wife. But who am I? Who is me? So other than that, it was a very, 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 very good um, convention. The four nights were great. But the best night to me, of course, was the first night and yesterday. Tonight was okay. But I love, but something about that third night, oh my God, Kamala Harris' speech was amazing. Um, but Joe's Biden speech was a stark warning, like, I'm coming for you, Trump. I'm coming for your job, and I'm coming for them Russians. That was a note to Putin. Putin, you better not with our elections. Because we're dealing with three countries that is messing with our elections. Besides Russia, we have China and Iran. That's willing to hack our elections. So any disinformation you see, ignore it. Because we got three countries that's already trying to mess with our elections. Like, it's that bad. And that came from the intelligence. The U.S. intelligence. Which Donald Trump has undermined time and time and time again. These three years have been the longest goddamn three years of my life. Who would have thought at my age, at 34 years old, I would see the most incompetent ass leader? I don't even say president. Leader. Leading this country and we're in embarrassment. We withdrew from the climate accord that will prevent bad air. I mean, hello, people. Hello. Right? So that's where we are in life. But as I end this, because... I'm going to do my little short little video to put it on Twitter. Vote. Organize. Mobilize. Talk to a friend. Vote. If you can do early register, early vote, vote. If you can register to vote, vote. We have to vote. And don't make this election the only election you vote. Vote in every election. Every election counts. Every office counts. From the local office to the federal office let's not have this conversation again but until then have a great night see you tomorrow